As Windows 7 end of support 2020 comes closer, some of you might be wondering what to do if they've got an older laptop. I've got this question from a viewer, his name is David M. At him, my tech, please give me advice. My friend asks what she can do if Windows 7 support is ending and sometimes her notebook is lagging. She has Samsung R520. By the way, this is a mistake. He corrected it later on. It's R522, but the specs, as he says, are still the same with Pentium T4200 and 3GB of RAM. I told her she can install all existing updates and continue to use Windows 7 or switch to Linux if she doesn't need any specific software. Also, it's probably worth cleaning the notebook and upgrade it with Core 2 Duo T9300 and upgrade RAM to 4GB. Is this correct advice? Well, is it? Let's check it out. Hey Nimtags and welcome, this is Ash from Hillmind Tech and on this channel I want to help you develop a better relationship with technology so consider subscribing and click the bell icon to go from newbie to techie also Amazon affiliate links in the description below please use them at no extra cost to you it will help out the channel I wonder how many people are in uh, the situation of David M's friends as in you probably have an older laptop and now you're wondering whether you should upgrade or not. So can you let me know in the comments below what kind of laptop you have, what are the specs and what are you currently deciding to do? After that, you might change your mind or you might even convince me to change my advice on this video. I've already answered David in the comment section, but I'm going to elaborate a bit more in this video. This video is going to be general advice based on this laptop. Your mileage probably will vary, you'll have a different make and model, but the principles of how to decide whether to upgrade or replace is going to remain the same. But shortly, I will be doing an actual old laptop hardware upgrade and even software. So make sure you check in for that one. So the short answer to this is no, this is not good advice. However, don't throw your laptop away just yet. Don't go out and buy a new one just yet. And also don't take it to a professional to get it assessed or repaired or upgraded. The reason for that third one is because if they are dodgy, they might convince you that your laptop is not worth anything and they will try to get it off of you either for free or very cheap and then refurbish it on their own website or in their shops. Unless you really trust them and they're not going to charge you for assessment fee, in which case, go for it. Now, if you've been a follower of this channel, you know my feelings generally on laptops. I'm not a big fan of them. Until today, it's been six years, I still do not possess a laptop for my own self as a daily driver, although I do use a few laptops here and there from clients or from relatives. But I have no laptop that belongs to me. I haven't bought one. I do probably need to get one, and I've mentioned this a few times. And I'm referring to this video up here, which was called Never Buy a Laptop, which has over half a million views and was a little bit controversial, and I've meant to do an update, never done so far. So hopefully, if I need to get a laptop, I will be doing an update of that video. So from the onset, we're going to assume that your laptop is actually upgradable, as in you can remove parts and put other parts because some makes and models have embedded or built-in or soldered on components and there is no upgrade options. My initial guess based on the specs of this laptop and the make is it's probably a 32-bit system specifically to do with the 3 gigabyte of RAM and it probably shipped with maybe Windows Vista or at least Windows 7 Starter Edition, which is very typical for a lot of netbooks that was designed for that. So the first problem that David mentions is lagging, and which is a very typical problem in older laptops or generally with many laptops. So lagging, slow or heavy. And that would be mostly due to a mechanical hard drive, which is usually found in uh, older laptops, even more recent laptops, although this is changing. As typically, you can find a 2.5 inch mechanical hard drive with 5,400 RPM. And no matter what you do to that laptop, it's always gonna be slow. It may not be that slow, uh, brand new, but eventually as you start putting programs and files on that, it will deteriorate and will become slower in performance, no matter what you do. The solution to this, you know it by now, is an SSD upgrade. A single 240 gigabyte SSD from a reputable brand will cost you about 30 pounds or $30. This will be the single most important and most effective hardware upgrade you can do to any old computer, whether it's a laptop or a desktop. Plus the bonus is an SSD is actually transferred 
transferable as a component upgrade. You can remove it from your laptop and put it in another laptop or another desktop. You can even convert it into an external mobile drive that you carry with you. It's going to be light, it's going to be fast and Bob's your uncle. Now, if you do need more space and if your laptop has got a DVD drive, you can always remove that DVD drive if you don't use it anymore and then get a converter in which you can put another drive you can even reuse your existing mechanical hard drive for extra storage done a video up there watch it now second point the cpu upgrade the current one is a pentium t4200 which is a dual core at 2 gigahertz the proposed upgrade is an intel core 2 duo t9400 which is also a dual core but at 2.5 gigahertz so in theory much higher clock speed but this in my books is not an actual upgrade because going from a dual core to a dual core even at higher clock speed is very insignificant, especially as an end user. If you're using generic applications like browsing, you might see a slight difference in maybe playback on the internet, but you will not see any marginal difference in almost any application, unless you're about to start doing gaming or video rendering, in which case you probably will not be doing on a low spec laptop. Thirdly, CPU laptop upgrades are very, very limited because most laptops are designed to accommodate the CPU that the manufacturer puts in there based on the type of cooling that they're also going to engineer for that specific laptop. Yes, in theory, you can get a higher clock speed laptop, which would mean higher thermal output, but you will be stuck with the same cooling system, which in my view is terrible. Usually the fan noise is problematic. I'm very sensitive to this and there is not much options you can get in terms of upgrading that fan or even that cooler. On some models, maybe, but they're quite rare and they will also cost you a bit. Unless if you're willing and able to completely re-engineer the design for the cooling system, it is not even worth mentioning. Regardless of how much dust cleaning you can do and also new thermal paste application, it's not going to make much difference. A little bit, but not enough, at least not in my books. Which also means that if you're getting a CPU upgrade, it's going to be a used market. You're not going to get a new one, which would have even higher thermal output. So definitely going to be needing better cooling, which is not going to happen. The fourth point, he mentions installing all existing updates. Now, yes, you can still update certain things, but after 14 January 2020, there will be no security updates from Microsoft unless you pay for it or you're part of an enterprise that has a deal directly with Microsoft, in which case your laptop is going to be vulnerable. I've addressed all of this in this video up here. Fifth point, he mentions upgrading the RAM from 3GB to 4GB. Of course, more RAM is always better. There is, in some cases, a diminishing point of return. However, if you just upgrade from 3 to 4, that's good. But for a system like this, especially if it's got a 32-bit system, going from 3 gigabyte to 4 gigabyte, again, very insignificant improve in performance and speed. And again, if you're sticking to the 32-bit system, there's a chance that the computer will not recognize the whole of the 4 gigabyte. But the good news is that both processors are actually 64-bit enabled architecture so yes if you can get four gigabyte at least even more is better if your laptop motherboard allows for it then yes consider upgrading from 32 bit to 64 bit for more ram as we've seen in our previous video where we were upgrading windows 7 32 bit to windows 10 64 bit for free you can watch the video up there or in the description below and the sixth point he mentions is switching to linux this is by far the best option on this channel at the moment we're trying linux mint cinnamon but if you've got an older laptop i would advise a linux mint xfce not the cinnamon because they're a bit heavy so the xfce will be perfect for a low spec laptop however there are plenty of other lightweight distros which a lot of our viewers usually recommend in the comments below which i'm sure they're doing right now so go check that out now some thoughts Upgrading all the hardware is never simple and you will definitely be spending time, effort and eventually money because yeah, even if you get the parts for free, you would have paid with stress. Do you really want that hassle? If internet forums are to be believed, it's quite a headache. Buying used parts comes with its own caveat, including limited warranty and even more limited return policy. So how do you determine whether a laptop is too old to be worth of an upgrade? Now, the general rule of thumb, and there will be exceptions to this, is if your laptop shipped with Windows XP, that is way too old, don't even bother. Now, if it originally shipped with Windows Vista or even Windows 7, but the starter edition, chances are you've got a very low spec netbook, which may not be worth. Usually those would be capped at about two gigabyte of RAM and even a 32 bit let alone a 64-bit Windows 10 upgrade will be very slow and very laggy on that system. 
for those, Linux is your best bet. However, even in those situations, the only hardware upgrade I would recommend would be an SSD as a minimum, even if you're gonna put Linux on there. Still, there will always be exceptions, and unless you actually get parts and tinker with the hardware first before you consider maybe upgrading to Windows 10 or even trying another Linux distribution, there is no telling what's gonna work, and it's not really fair to say if it's a 10 year old laptop then forget it because mileage will vary but the problem is that you may not have easy access to available parts if you do they might be expensive and you may not be very familiar with troubleshooting uh, laptop problems and yeah there will be problems because you're dealing with used parts and if that's your situation then no it's not worth upgrading the hardware and i would even say it's not worth upgrading to windows 10. however if you are in my shoes and you do have access to parts or you are okay with buying used parts to tinker because you like to troubleshoot and you can even make a video if at least to tell someone look i've done this upgrade and it is not worth it then yeah absolutely go for it on that note i've got a previous sony vio laptop and i did a full assessment on the channel probably about two years ago it belonged to a client but the client never went ahead with the upgrade and it's been with me since and he they haven't even picked it up so i kind of use it every now and then and i did not advise for a full upgrade because they were insisting back then i still did the assessment but i still would not advise a full upgrade on this laptop i mean i did uh, change the hard drive to an ssd i did put some more ram and i put new thermal paste application and it's slightly better but there are three problems number one the screen is not ips so it's generic standard 1366 by 768 resolution i believe it's really heavy so lugging around with my other content creation gear is a problem and the biggest one of all is the fan noise it's too loud for my own liking no matter how good the dust cleaning was and the new thermal paste was applied it didn't make much difference for my own sanity this is my pet peeve so yeah i use it every now and then but i wouldn't use it as a daily driver and i wouldn't advise anyone to do this kind of full upgrade but the partial upgrade yeah windows 10 and ssd more ram and new thermal paste worth it on a laptop of this age as for this more recent hp laptop which i did a screen replacement on the channel that's where david asked me the question again it belonged to a client but they chose not to go ahead with the replacement cost so i ended up with it and i did consider maybe upgrading it and keeping it for myself However, again, the CP on there is embedded, so I can't upgrade that. Even if I could, we'd have a problem with the fan noise, which already is a big problem because it's too loud for my liking. Although we can upgrade the SSD, we can upgrade RAM, and we can even add more storage through the existing drive bay. Uh, in terms of the screen, I wouldn't necessarily want to upgrade the screen to 1920 by 1080p for IPS because it's got an AMD A10, which is decent, but it's not good enough to do any kind of extensive work like video rendering or even gaming for my level. So I am not gonna be wanting to upgrade this, probably just flog it away or keep it as a secondary uh, occasional laptop, as long as I'm using a headphone because can't deal with the noise. So to answer the question that we ask, should you replace your laptop or upgrade it? The answer, if you don't want to spend any money the only thing you should do with that old laptop is to put a linux distribution in there no doubt however my personal recommendation regardless of the age of the laptop is to get yourself an ssd 30 pounds or 30 dollars that will be a long-term investment the performance improvement the speed of usage is going to be enough to justify the cost regardless whether you're upgrading to windows 10 or even sticking with an old linux distro i'm still recommending an ssd upgrade as a minimum but if you have higher needs than just general browsing then you should consider buying a new computer and i don't mean just get a new laptop unless mobility is a problem or you haven't got any space you should consider trying to build your own computer and if you're new to the whole building a new computer thing i've done a complete series it's called one piece to them all which i'm going to try and put down here somewhere and you can also check out this awesome video which is specifically chosen for you now while you're going to check out these videos out don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon and also use my amazon affiliate links in the description below and i will see you in the next one until next time peace out